All right, so chapter seven, we read about um, Kira trying to save her brother. Um, so Tico fell at the end of chapter six into this mob of the takers and um, they immediately were able to capture him and they tried threatening him and they tried to um, figure out where he came from. Um, and we learned that Tico is pretty strong for a little kid, um, strong-willed, uh, meaning he wasn't really telling them anything. He wasn't intimidated by them. He wasn't acting scared. Um, he kind of stood up to them. And so um, the one character, Red Streak, who seems to be the leader um, and the most scary and violent um was the one who was kind of taking charge of it. And then one of the other um, takers that they call Yellow Grass, he um, was trying to stop him a little bit from being so mean to Tico. And while all this was happening, Kira was watching and trying to figure out a plan of how to get him out of there. So the one thing that I thought was pretty cool was how they were able to travel um, through the trees and climb and almost, I guess, like some sort of monkey, um, go through the trees like that from branch to branch and move pretty quickly, um, climbing up and down the trees. So, um, obviously part of the fantasy part of the story, but, um, also really cool, cool skill to have. Um, so she came up with the plan where she was going to rush down and free the other prisoner that they had from the village um, and have him run off and once he was far enough away scream loudly so that they would be distracted realize that he took off and they would go chase after him and she could um, rescue her brother so her plan kind of worked. Um, as she was just about to free the prisoner, she noticed Yellowgrass saw her. So he didn't alert the others. We don't really know why. Um, why was he being so kind to her brother? Why did he see her and not go after her immediately um, or tell the others she was there? He allowed her to continue with her plan. And um, we don't really know why. Hopefully we find that out soon, um, what his motivation is. But she was able to climb back up the tree. She was counting because she was trying to keep track of how far and when he was going to scream because she was putting a rope down for her brother to climb up once they all realized that their prisoner had escaped. So her plan worked perfectly except that um, Red Streak forgot his weapon and as they took off he turned around to get his weapon and saw that Tico was escaping so that made him really angry and um, Kira was able to luckily swing and save her brother pull him up um, and she had a little run in where Red Streak almost grabbed her but he um, was too heavy for the branch so he crashed down to the ground um, and we read about the rest of their escape out of the forest and they made it to the plain. So plain is a flat, um, area of land that was covered in tall grass so they could run through it. Um, pretty much not being able to be seen. Um, and so her only direction to her brother was to just run as fast as you've ever run in your life and don't stop. Um, again, that would have been a wonderful plan, except that Red Streak apparently had some sort of dog where I'm sure at the camp it was kept somewhere. So he grabbed the dog. The dog has very good scent and was able to track the kids. And so, um, the last couple of pages of this chapter was from Red Streak's percept perspective um that we learn and I want to make sure that I get this right Kobar the red is actually his name Kobar so we learn that Kobar um was able to track the kids with the help of his dog and he um saw them headed for the volcano which confused him he thought they were from the village um and he realized that they weren't headed in that direction they were going toward the volcano which they thought was, you know, an area that was um, 
for danger because that's what they had been told by every other villager and every other person they met that the volcano was about to erupt. So he noticed that they were running up the volcano and then they disappeared. And he pretty quickly put together that um, they lived in some sort of village inside of the volcano and now his... Uh, attention is fully focused on that. He's going to go back and get his troops and bring them there so that they can figure out how to get into this volcano village. And he thinks that there's a bunch of treasure in there that he's going to go after. So that is basically his plan right now, which we know puts Kira and her family and her entire village in jeopardy. And that is kind of where we leave off um, with knowing that the kids made it home safely, but that this group of takers now know about the volcano village and now they're in danger.